Happy Monday, Happy New Week. Thank you, sir. See ya, Michael. No, kiss ya, me How was the weekend? The weekend was great. Yes. Yeah, I had a really awesome weekend. Nice one, nice one. That's yeah. what we want to hear. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's your name? Uh, my name is Tzingla. What's your name? 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 FM. Thank you for having me. I hope you are ready for your Monday motivation. I hope you are sitting next to the radio with your young ones mm-hmm. so we can motivate you today. Thank yes, you. Sir. Yes, take it away, Mr. Mahavi. Uh, um, <laughs> I, had, I had interesting messages last week okay. on the, on the, on the, what you call it, on the, on the inboxes. Yes, yes. Uh, so people wanted to know, and it was mainly ladies, you know, yeah. which was actually quite interesting nice. because ladies wanted to know how the story that I was sharing yesterday was ending. Yes. Does it end? <laughs> do they end up together or not? Yeah. I said, but that was not the purpose behind <laughs> the story. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So so people love happy endings. So mm. I, I think I think it's one of those things that um I would like to also emphasize today as we finalize the law of consistency to say, you know, for a lot of people you might find that you find yourself in a space where you have dealt with a lot. Yes, sir. When it comes to your life and your experiences and mm. everything that you have gone through. Maybe even mentally you don't think you are the best version of mm. yourself. You are not the best that you can be because there's a lot of other stuff that you are dealing with, which are making it rather very difficult for you as a person. And I believe that that becomes important for you to realize that, you know, sometimes you don't always start well. Mm -hmm. Uh, You don't always, you know, your life doesn't always kick off the way you want it to kick off because most of the time, most of the things are not in your control. Mm -hmm. But you will find that as time goes you will realize that a lot of stuff begin to be more in your handle than you can imagine, Mm. which means you can actually finish well. Hmm. So even if you don't start as well as you think, but you can actually finish very well, you can make sure that ultimately, you know, the peak of your life or rather the the sunset of your life, uh, you know, is at the point where you you, you are now meeting your goals and, and you're achieving the stuff that you've always wanted to achieve. All I'm saying is that, you know, sometimes in life you you meet certain information that is critical and crucial for you but you might meet it late in your life and think had i gotten this information when i was younger mm-hmm. um, if that is the case uh, i'm saying to you now that it's never too late yes, sir. Uh, you can start at any point in time of your life and still do well mm-hmm. now if you start now you are able to do things and do them very well mm-hmm. so as we are talking about focus you know i always say to people that how you speak and how you communicate more than half the time mm-hmm. determines what people see in you okay people don't always have to hear stuff about you in the street Mm. and then only believe in you Hmm. most of the time you'll find that people tend to know more about you by just talking to you Mm. and when they are talking to you there's a lot that they can pick up you can pick up a lot when you are talking to a person how they are talking you know tells you how they think it Mm. tells you a lot about the personality of a person you know you find people some of them they say no but it's because i am humble but you might find that that person is actually an introvert (laughs) You know, and they they call it humility and humbleness. And it's not necessarily that. It's just simply because you are not as communicative as other people. So most of the time, I I, I emphasize the fact that you need to actually develop a certain level of focus. Remember, we spoke last week about consistency to say consistency has to have a goal. Mm. You you can't just be randomly consistent. There has to be several things that you are focusing on that you have perceived that you have looked at and you have known that or you have seen that they actually produce results. Mm. And that goes about you looking, you know, uh, uh, you know, looking at, at, at how other people have been successful. What is it that they do that they do well? What qualities do they have that are actually positive that can help you also develop to a level or to a point where you are able to actually successfully also meet your targets and your goals in life? And that has everything to do with having to see those trends and learning them and being able to tell. And this is one of the things I do most of the time in my life. I I study successful people. I take time to study them. I I could tell you stories about successful people who think, hey, have, have you ever sat with this guy before? I'd be like, yeah. no. I actually sat and researched and, and tried to find out what is it about this particular individual that makes them this successful? How did they actually get to a point where they did so well in their lives? Because I can tell you right now, everything has a system that works. Yes, sir. And that system goes about you understanding what inputs are you supposed to put in there for you to get to a point where the system works for you. Mm-hmm. And I am saying to you today, that I am giving you laws that are allowing you to be able to put, have, have the right kind of input into your system. Hmm. 
have the right kind of input into your system. Now, as you are developing focus and consistency in your life, now, I've always said this, uh, even in the beginning, that focus can be good and focus can also be a bit dangerous. Hmm. Ne? And, and let me talk more about the positive side of focus. Yes, sir. The positive side of focus is that when you develop focus, it also shows how creative you are. Mm. You can show, you can actually exhibit certain creative abilities that you also never thought you had. But because you are focusing your energies in the, sa in the same thing, your energies become more useful to you. Mm. Now, let me give you an example. If you had to deal with 10 problems at the same time, yeah. you are not going to be as effective in solving all of those 10 problems at the same time. Because think about it this way. If it's 10 problems and you are giving 10% because you only have 100% energy, mm -hmm. you are giving 10% energy to each of these 10 problems. What does that mean? What it means is that you have only managed to solve 10% of each of those 10 problems. Yes. So basically you have not really solved anything. Mm -hmm. But what focus allows you to do, it allows you to isolate problems and you deal with a problem, one problem at a time and you give it 100% of your energy. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, you might find that you are able to even solve problems quicker. You might be able to solve problems even quicker mm -hmm. and even more effectively than you could have if you were looking at a lot of things at the same time. So what am I trying to say? Is that when you are doing things consistently, what you need to also be careful of is that you need to avoid distraction. This is where focus comes in. Mm -hmm. Avoiding distractions because those distractions will reduce the amount of energy you are putting into what you are doing. And you will find that sometimes you've been doing something so well for a while. And now all of a sudden there's problems that come. Now, this is why I love athletics. You know, there are levels to athletic games that people play. There is what you call sprinting, 100 meter sprinting. There is what you call 200, 400 meters, uh, uh, you, know, you know, races. And there's what you call hurdles. For me, hurdles is one of the most exciting ones. Because what it basically does is it's, it's not about how fast you are. It's not about how much stamina you have in running, but it's also about your ability to uh, uh, overcome hurdles while you are running. So in as much as you can be fast, you will find that your fastest runner, let's take Hussein Bolt for an example. Yeah. You might find that Hussein Bolt might not do that. I've never seen him do hurdles, so I'm not going to make an assumption. You might find that he might not be as good of a runner if he does hurdles as opposed to when he runs 100 meters. You might find that he's not good of a runner when he does 200 or 400 meters because as a runner, he's only good at doing what? 100 meters. So his focus best works for him when he does what? 100 meter race. So you need to also evaluate your ability as a person to say, if I'm focusing on a person, on a, on a situation, or if I'm focusing on something, how long is my focus span for me to effectively do what I need to do? This allows you to choose the kind of problems you invest your energies in. Because some of them might take you longer to solve. And because your focus span is shorter, focus on those things at that time that you might solve with the span that you have. While you are de developing your capacity to have a focus span that is longer. Yes, so the whole thing is around you having the ability to grow. To grow your focus to a level where, yes, I might have been able to focus for a day or two and be able to solve a problem. And if a day requires me to spend a week, I am not as effective as I am if it requires me to take two days. That also requires you to then develop your ability, your capacity in terms of being focused. Now, this becomes important because then it allows you to be able to realize that me as a person, whenever I deal with issues, even if people throw a hundred issues towards me, my ability allows me to only deal with one issue at the time. There are people that have actually developed their focus muscle to a point where they are able to deal with multiple issues. They call it multitasking, mm -hmm. where they are able to do multiple things at the same time. But do not pride yourself in saying I can multitask when you are unable to accomplish. Hmm. Wow. So multitasking must be looked at in the context of saying I am able to do what? I am able to multitask mm -hmm. and I'm able to accomplish and finish those duties that I have. Yes, so it shouldn't be just about being excited. or The question is, are you able to actually complete those tasks or not? And this becomes important. So now there are three types of people that I want to talk to where focus is concerned. Yes, sir. The people that are talented. Mm -hmm. Talented people. The, the, there is a risk factor that is associated with being talented. That it reduces the lack of focus. It reduces the lack of focus because they get bored easily. You know, people who are focused when they are talented, most of the time you will find that they, they lose interest very quickly in things. 
Okay. Because they are so creative, they want to do this and they want to do that and they want to do when something bores them, they want to walk away from it and actually not give it as much focus as it should get. So you will find that many a times you find people that are always good at starting stuff, but they actually never finish stuff. Yo. And more than half the time, those type of people are people who are talented. Mm. And that becomes a problem because more than half the time, you will find that they do a lot over a period of time, but they never actually achieve much. So when people are talented, focus becomes important for them because focus becomes like a navigator to them. It brings them, it aligns them. You know, if you, if you, if you drive with a navigator, yeah. it will tell you when you go off the route, mm. it will say recalculating yes, and it will try and bring you back to the path. And that's what a, a, a talented person needs to have in their life. Some form of system that allows them to always navigate, to always realign, which is why I always say it's important that before you start any activity, have goals, yeah. have objectives, because because those goals and objectives are like what we call alignment. It's like a vehicle when you drive a car. You can't drive a car for two, three years without doing wheel alignment. Because that car will, will be very dangerous for you to drive. It will always come offline. It will always lose, uh, what you call it, uh, uh, the line of sight because it's not aligned. So you as a person as well, you need to always have something that you are always going back, what we call a blueprint. Mm -hmm. To say, I have a blueprint for my life. That blueprint will help you discover and do a lot of things in your life now there are there is also another group of people that's called extroverts yes. extroverts are those type of people that are talkative they find it easy to mingle mm. they are always out there talking to people they they, they they are not shy to express themselves and share their opinions mm. those people are called extroverts those people most of the time they run the risk of being distracted mm. due to the ability of being able to network and mingle and you'll find that many a times they take longer to fulfill tasks they take longer to actually accomplish the duties, certain things that are given to them simply because they are so good at intermingling that even when they are trying to focus, yeah. someone will want their attention. Mm -hmm. And they need to develop the discipline that says, when I'm focusing on something, you might find that many a times a person who's an extrovert will do better every time when they have a task if they isolate themselves and focus on what they are doing. I don't know if that makes any sense. Yes, so you will find for you as an extrovert, you might need for you to increase your level of focus. You might need to isolate yourself from distraction. Mm -hmm. Because when you see people, th those people are generally called people lovers. You know, whenever they're around people, they, 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 they are on fire. They, they get excited when they see people because that's what keeps them going. Yeah. So for them to be able to focus and focus on what they need to do, sometimes it requires them to actually isolate themselves. And when they do that, their focus is now increased and they're able to achieve a lot more. Now, there are those, that, that, that group of people that's called introverts. Yeah. Introverts is, is the people that we normally say, no, this person is shy. Mm. You know, he doesn't like talking to people. He prefers being alone. Yeah. He prefers doing... Those people... <laughs> those people the only challenge mm -hmm. that they will generally have when they are trying to do something is by trying to convince everyone that what they are trying to do is the right thing to be done yeah. because people who are introverts most of the time they 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 fight to try and get attention mm. now you will find that many a times even with young people you'll find those young people that will compromise even their own principles just to be liked dangerous it's just just so that their friends can say hi lo, we're not a con we're not a con you, you are the man you know yeah whatever <laughs> you know those type of things and and sometimes you'll find they run the risk of trying to be a people's pleaser mm. by always trying to get people's approval because they are introverts they they don't most of the time an introvert struggles with self-esteem yeah. They struggle with believing in themselves without people telling them that you are good at what they are doing and you will find that even when they do well they struggle to believe that they have done well unless someone comes and says, you have done well. Yo. So you will find that a lot of times introverts lose focus if they don't get compliments. Okay. If they don't get compliments, about, it's like if you are a preacher. Mm. You know, I'm using preaching a lot as an example because that's the field I understand best. Yes, yes. So if you are a preacher and you preach and you feel that the message you have preached was good, and when you step down there, you want to look at people to say, how many people are coming and saying, this was powerful, this was good. And if people don't come, if you're an introverted person, that thing will actually make you feel bad. It will make you feel like what you did did not have as much impact as it, as it should have had. And most of the time, that creates a problem. So the system of growth, like I said, and I, I, used, I used the example of a person going to gym. And I said, if you go to gym, what you need to always look out for is making sure that 
when you start going to gym, you, you know and you understand what your goals are. Because there are things you are going to encounter when you are exercising. Mm -hmm. And we call them cramps, there's pains, there's a lot of other things that you experience. Yeah. And sometimes you, you might wake up in the morning wanting to go to gym and you don't feel like it. You are not in the mood. And there, there's a lot, anything that you do in life has its own things that are pushing you back. Mm -hmm. And you need to always understand that to say, there will always be things that are pushing me back if I'm trying to do something that's positive. Now, when you go to gym and you go and you exercise, you exercise, you come back. The first day, hey, you've got so much cramps. You wake up the next day and you're thinking to yourself, ah, if gym does this to me, I don't <laughs> think this is what I'm willing to actually experience. Mm -hmm. But what you don't realize is that if you continue going to gym, mm -hmm. after some time of you pushing, even in the middle of the cramps and the pains, you will get to a point where those cramps are not as painful as they used to be. And you will graduate and go even further and get to a point where those cramps are now completely gone. Yeah. It's like a person who starts a business. You start a business and you are hopeful because you think you have this big dream. Mm -hmm. You have this big idea that everyone will like. As soon as the business starts, you realize, eh, I don't have as many customers as I thought I would have. Mm -hmm. Now, you can't wake up and say, let's leave this thing. It's not working. You need to keep pushing because as you push, guess what? People then begin to notice you because you are consistent. There is this, the most wonderful thing about being consistent is that even if the world ignores you, when you are consistent and the world is ignoring you, be consistent to a point where the world begins to notice you. It's like a person who's posting. If you start posting and you post and you post and you get one like, two yeah. likes, three likes, four likes, and you realize well, <laughs> it doesn't look like what I'm trying to do is actually yeah, working. Yeah. Let me tell you something. If you continue consistently posting, mm -hmm. after a while you'll be shocked. You will realize that your likes are now becoming more and more because there are more people that are beginning to notice you. Why? Because you are always in their face. Mm -hmm. And that is the power of advertising. You know, that's what they use. And you will have an ad on TV. I mean, even you, as old as you are yeah. now, there are ads you used to hear on TV when you were 10 years old that you still remember now. One of them is Bull Brand, you know. Yeah. <laughs> that ad of lunch bar with that short guy and the tall one. You don't forget those things. Why are you not forgetting them as old as you are? It's because it was always in your face so much to a point where it was embedded in your mind. Now, imagine if you use the same principle to make sure to make sure that you become visible, yes. that you become known, that you are there, you know, whether you are a preacher, whether you are a blogger, whether you are someone who's trying to open up a channel on social media or whatever, a YouTube channel or whatever that you are trying to do. It does not start with a hundred likes. Yes, sir. It might start with and maybe sometimes because you are well known, it might start with 500 likes. Mm -hmm. And but you will realize that as you go, those 500 likes will drop and they end up at 50 mm -hmm. because as you continue now, you need to have people that really are buying into your idea and that becomes difficult so you will find that you know that that growth comes and, and it comes with its own challenges and it gets to a point where when as a person you will need to now look into yourself and say unless i continue to push unless i have heart to continue to push i'm not going to get to where i want to get to and that is the power of consistency that you are able to achieve a lot more if you continue doing the same thing Mm -hmm. With the right kind of focus, you are doing it over and over again until you get to a point where you start seeing results. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Nothing that just nothing just happens. Hmm. Even with the billionaires, you can take the top 10 billionaires yes. and ask them, how long did it take them before their businesses took off? Mm -hmm. So I was looking at, um, at the, 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 the top 10 or not the top 10. I was looking at the demographics around uh, who became billionaire at what age? Yeah. In fact, it uses millionaire yes. at what age? And I realized that the millionaires that became millionaires when they were younger, mm -hmm. they are billionaires as well, but they are not necessarily in the top 10 wow. billionaires. Wow. Okay. And I looked and I, it was intriguing. And I looked and I, okay, the ones that, are, that became billionaires when they were older, mm -hmm are much more bigger billionaires that became billionaires in their in their 30s and their 40s. They, they're actually in the top 10. And I said, okay, so these guys have been doing this for much longer. They've been failing and standing up for much longer. Life has been hitting them and throwing them down for much longer. This is one of the reasons why their success yeah. is much larger okay. than the success of those who have just all of a sudden become. And I don't know if I'm making any sense. Wow. So as a person, you will ne then need to realize to say, OK, even for those guys, you will realize on average, none of them, none of them ran their business for less than 15 years before they started seeing results. 
So I'm not saying it's a standard, mm -hmm. but on average, for the ones I have looked at, yeah. on average, 15 years was the mm -hmm. benchmark for them to begin to actually make an impact in their businesses and start actually seeing results. Now, if it, if it took that long, for a person to actually get to a space where their business started giving them what they actually expected. Now, you need to realize that the amount of work you need to put into yourself for you to begin to see a difference and a change in your life is actually quite significant. It's not an overnight solution. So the level of input that you put in determines the level of output. And sometimes that it de is determined by the quality of input, mm -hmm. but it's also determined by the time in which you continue to input the same thing into that system over and over again yes. until you get to a point where you are able to actually achieve much. Mm -hmm. So I would like to encourage you today mm -hmm. to say, understand that nothing happens overnight. Yes. There are no shortcuts when it comes to success. Mm -hmm. There are no shortcuts when it comes to transformation of the mind. There are no shortcuts when it comes to transforming your life. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can transform your life by deciding that you're going to go out there and transform your look. I want to look different. Yeah. You know, you can go and do a new hairstyle. You know, a lot of people have been <laughs> fighting me recently on social media and say, get a haircut. Yo. They were fighting me to say, get a haircut. Mm -hmm. I said, no, guys, you know, it's the first time you guys see me around yeah. this time of the year. Yes. Now for now, it's my rule. I don't yeah. cut my hair until the end of March. Oh. So it's my system. Oh, yeah. So that's my system. So, you know, some people will say certain things because they don't know. Yeah. For me, it doesn't affect me. Now, lawyer and I, as a person, you've got your own systems. Stick by your systems mm -hmm. if they work for you. And stay with those systems and make sure you consistently push until you start seeing results. But remember what I told you in the beginning. Make sure that whatever system you have put in place mm -hmm. is a system that actually works. works. Mm -hmm. Because it is one thing to adopt a habit that does not work. Yeah. And you keep pushing a habit until it frustrates you. But you have need to have actually checked that that habit actually really does work. Yeah. And this is why I was saying last week that you need to adopt what we call success habits. It's not just a habit, but it must be a success habit. Mm -hmm. You need to have observed and you have seen that this habit can actually deliver results. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, 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 I believe that I'm closing now on, 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 on consistency yeah. to say you now understand that for you to be consistent, mm -hmm. first of all, you need to develop a goal. Mm -hmm. There needs to be some form of target that you are looking at. And with this target you are looking at, make sure that you become focused in doing what you are doing consistently over and over again until you begin to see results. Now, you need to develop a certain level of resilience that allows you to say, I will push until something happens. Yeah. I'm not going to give up. Hmm. You know, it's so nice if you say to yourself, I'm not going to give up when you know that you are pushing. When they say trust the process, yeah. the question is the process you are trusting. Have you evaluated it? Have you actually looked that it actually works elsewhere mm -hmm. and it has developed results so that when you are trusting it, you are trusting it because it has worked. Yo, okay. So you don't just trust the process. They will say, just trust the process. Yeah. You trust the process. Okay, it's fine. But what process is it? Mm -hmm. Has it worked before? Evaluate. To whom did it work with? You know, have you evaluated? Have you looked? Have you researched? Have you studied to check if that system actually really works? So that when you say, I am trusting the process, mm -hmm. you can hang on to that process knowing that ultimately it produces results so that's my motivation for the week thank you listeners for listening and may you have a, a very very fruitful uh -huh. and a great week uh -huh. consistency is the key thank you Mr. Mapir, the Melissa Tahapore, Utleka Gorman, Tahaja Kaudra Kahaleman, Tahota Rukleta, Rikuta Rukles Hilimira, Hulabatata, Jalaka, and Rukleta Kapakaman Tahapi, found a Hornella, Ingwe Happy, Yahore Zama Jang, who can not enter Rukles, Halam Katat. Yes, sir, thank you so much. Thank you. Mutasioke, Mr. Mohapi, Yolo Rendra Jalaman, Taham Gulemue, 